Okay, we're back and let's talk about brushes. So I'm gonna start by coming up here and getting a new document. I've got my size set there. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so I can use this whole entire canvas. So this is where you get your brushes. Your main brush tool is right here. There's also a pencil tool. I'm not going to cover the other two, um, but they're all these tools are worth figuring out. And um, the deeper that you go, the more you could find something that could actually make your work look unique and could set you apart from everyone else. So one of the biggest mistakes people do when they get Photoshop is they use the stock airbrush. So I just came over here to my brush palette. Again, you can get that from the window and just go to brushes and that'll pop that out um, and then I'm gonna click on brush tip shape right there that's gonna give me a whole list of brushes that I already have and they call these stock brushes because these came preloaded with your Photoshop you can also make a brush but we're not gonna cover that in this tutorial the biggest mistake people do in Photoshop is they use this brush it's the number well it's it's a 30 brush but it's the first brush in the palette and I think the reason that people use this um, is that they can uh, feather things and 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 make things nice and soft and it's 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 easier that way I'm gonna turn down the opacity on this and just show you what happens there um, and so you could you could understand that if you had um, Let's turn it down even further. If you were trying to to shade in or value put value to a drawing, you know you could build up with that right there. Okay, something like that. If I keep hitting it, and that's why it's appealing is because you can get these soft blends. And there's definitely a time and a place to use that, but that's probably the the biggest mistake people make is just using that brush and using it soft all the time. Um, so I'm going to show you a few things uh, and we'll cover this, we're going to cover this opacity and flow thing as well. Um, so the first thing let's talk about is, um, I'm trying to figure out where to go with this right now, which one to do first. Um, let's, let's look at a few different brushes first. You have, you have um, lots of different brushes in this stock toolbox here and what I would suggest is just getting some of them and playing around with them and seeing what they're capable of doing right um, it's important to note that this this one right here if I move fast it's kind of getting that that um, pattern and you can always control that pattern with spacing right here and so if I if I do that now it will change that spacing and of course if I go out here it's gonna do something more like that okay um, I'm switching over to the eraser when I get rid of everything and I I I'll cover the eraser on on this uh, video as well I don't use these other two um, but you can experiment with those and 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 figure out uh, what they do and how they could possibly work for you um, I try to stick with basic simple tools um, that se seems to give me the best results um, but sometimes I do need to go into those other tools. Um, another thing that you can do with any brush, let me just cover this right now, is, you know, this is a circular brush right now, but I can, I can change that by grabbing these points right here and uh, changing the, the, um, the diameter or the, the, the shape of the brush into more of an ellipse, okay? So there's that, and um, you can also change the hardness of your brush right here. So um, there are a few key commands that I really feel like you should learn, and that's going to save you from having to use this hardness setting right here. So um, what I what I want you to do, and I just went back to the to the original brush, and it resets it there, so you can see it's back to to the circle there. I'm increasing my brush size right now um, with, and let me get 
that harder brush and let me change my opacity up a little bit here I'm just kind of brushing along there you can change it again with the slider um, I can change the size of my brush with my bracket keys on my keyboard and that's what you might be hearing when I tap up if I keep toggling I'll go up and if I toggle down it'll go small that is a lifesaver when you're trying to paint and fill areas because you don't have to reach for a different brush you can just toggle up paint and then if um, you need a, some more detail some finer detail areas you can get down in there and you can go clear down with that one brush so this one number 30 brush is giving me uh, with just those just the bracket up and bracket down it's giving me that option but it's also right at my fingertips if I just put one finger over on shift and hold that down I can also change the softness of the brush. Oh, I have to let go of shift or else it's going to draw a line. But I just hold shift and, and toggle uh, or tap those same exact bracket keys and I can do, let me do this here, let me get rid of this. Um, let's, I'm going to shift and I'm going to bracket left. And I'm going to shift and bracket right one time, one click. Oops. Shift bracket again, shift bracket again, shift bracket again. You can see what's happening there, right? And so now I have the, this crisp line. Um, now uh, some brushes will actually do this thing when you're on when you're on crisp where they won't smooth it out. Sometimes using smoothing will help a little bit. Sometimes it won't. Um, but um, you can. I, I typically won't go to that hardest setting because of that. I'll usually go right back here and you can get a fairly crisp line that way and do your detail work like that right so that's that's super important to be able to um, uh, get the control by remembering those key commands those those are key commands I, I really st stress um, that you learn how to use because it will really save you a lot of time on um, painting so that again that is that is the bracket keys for um, changing the size, bracket right, bracket left, toggle back and forth, and then um, shift bracket left, shift bracket right. Um, and that's on the, the PC again. I'm not exactly sure what it is on the Mac. Okay. Um, so then the next thing that I want to talk about is using shape dynamics. Shape dynamics will actually... And, and, and as, as we look at these different um, settings right here, each one of them can be checked. But when, when they're checked, so let me, I'm going to check this transfer because I'm going to show you transfer next. And so basically, um, when you, and I'm getting a call right now, of course. But when you um, have one of these checked, it will bring up, and if you, if you have the, the layer or the, um, the setting highlighted, it will bring up all these controls over here. Now I have transfer checked, you can see, but none of these controls will control transfer unless I actually touch the word and highlight that word. Then it'll change all these settings for that. That's really important. Sometimes people uh, forget that and I'll get a call or I'll get a message and they'll say, I can't remember how you, you, you said to do that one thing. And it turns out that they're trying to change the settings for shape dynamics, but They've got transfer highlighted or vice versa. So make sure that you tap on the individual um, area that you want to do to, to do your settings on. Okay. So we're going to go back to shape dynamics now and tap shape dynamics there. And you'll notice that mine is set to pen pressure on this control right here. Okay. It'll probably came defaulted on off for you. I want you to change that to pen pressure. And what that will allow me to do, I'm just going to go back to 100% here on the opacity, is it'll allow me to have thin and thick lines with that brush. And that, that's really important to get kind of a natural feel because, you know, when you push down on a pencil, you'll get more of a natural uh, or a pen. You'll get the, the, the less you press, um, the thinner the line is and with many natural mediums. Okay, so that's super important to, to be able to use that. Sometimes I want it, sometimes I don't. 
if I'm doing a gradient or filling an area or, or shading in an area, sometimes I want a really blunt brush. And I, excuse me, and I don't want this, I don't want it going to a tip. Even if I have a, you know, a big brush here, I just don't want it to go smaller like this, you know. I want it to to stay, to keep the size. But that's important to, to keep in mind that you have that option. The next one is this transfer, and I use this almost all the time. Again, I can't change the controls for transfer unless I click on the word. And then, again, set your control. Your control is going to probably come defaulted off. Set that to pen pressure also. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to access the pressure sensitivity, which actually so did, um, so did shape dynamics. But this allows me to access it in a different way. And that is that I can I can go from light to dark just by pushing harder. And that's super important for you know when you're when you're working on an area and you want more natural a natural feel to your gradients and things like that. And that works for all the different brushes too as well. So you know if I have this kind of a brush, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna do the same kind of a thing. Um, but again, yeah, play with brushes, get familiar. You can't hurt Photoshop. You can always reset the, uh, the settings if you get into some area that you don't like. There's also these brushes that are directional brushes. You'll notice up here in this corner, as I tw twist my hand, it actually twists that brush so that I can keep, I can change the, where the point is. So I can pull a point from different positions and that's really helpful for doing detail work and work if you if you want your work to have more of a natural feel to it um, they are a little bit laggy depending on your processor sometimes so this isn't too bad but if you get into a high-res image sometimes you'll find that they'll your 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 computer might not be powerful enough to run those that's a that's a possibility if you start to really lag down um, so and there's all kinds of those different brushes and you can and they work the same way you can increase the size um, yeah see when I go big like that it's it's got some lag because it's really trying to figure out a lot um, okay so there's that and then let's talk about uh, opacity and flow I'm gonna go back to my original brush here and I'm gonna uncheck the the transfer so the transfer you know it's it's allowing me to get that that uh, pressure sensitivity but sometimes you might not want it on the brush you might want to set it up here so at 100 percent black that that's where I am right there and I'm just going to sharpen this up a little bit just so you can see and as I move the opacity down it's going to give me less coverage or less paint right and one way that you can actually see that and I've been painting on the background layer um, let's do that again and let's um, we're gonna we're gonna turn off this layer and I'm gonna show you um, that that is complete coverage so you can't see through it right but as we go down you will be able to see through and so you're painting with more of a transparent paint as you decrease that opacity right now what about with the flow what about what happens when we decrease the flow let's 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 do that again add a little experiment and see what happens okay so we'll leave it 100 percent there starting to see through it what the flow is it's actually it's actually how much paint is coming out at any one time and it, and it really I think it really stems from using an airbrush and how much um, you're allowing to come out of your of your brush um, and uh, so let's let's get another layer I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this with white just so I can have that and I'll lock that down but let's try this experiment and see what happens when 
we um, are painting along here and we have let's say we we um, have the opacity up right and then we start to decrease the flow after a while what you're gonna see is a pattern form and let's see I make it bigger so you can see so if you're ever getting that kind of a pattern what's happening is you're moving your brush faster than the paint can come out because your flow is so low um, I feel like you're probably better off if you're gonna mess with the flow uh, keeping it about the same as your opacity so if you want to decrease opacity and you want to decrease how much paint is coming out keep them about the same but don't let your flow get too low you know um, and there are times where you want to just kind of keep your keep keep all the paint coming out the same and that's why you don't want to use that transfer that we found over here in the brush palette right here okay so there's that and I think that's all we're gonna do on this video